Hey y'all, it's Adrian Reed with Mossy Creek Mushrooms, and today I want to show you how to go from this to this as quickly as possible. Yep, he's my favorite. Alright, so first, we need to go into the grow room and pick our mushroom, so let's go that way. Picking mushrooms, typically, the easier, or the bigger the stem, the easier it is to work with. So, pick that bad boy right there, with the nice fat stems, and take it back to the lab. Okay, so now, just got a cleaner space, and the way that I normally clean my space is just take my isopropyl alcohol, 70%, and just douse the table down. And yes, I know, I use way too much alcohol. I get it. Even you medical professionals say that I use too much alcohol. And I got my paper towels which Jason stole. Okay, now I got my paper towels back from Jason. And just wipe it down from the hood back. So I usually just go here, work my way back and forth. hand sanitizer on my delicate hands. Sterile needle, sterile syringe, and not drop it on the floor. Take two. <laughs> All right, you need a sterile needle and a sterile syringe. Walk over here without dropping it like the last day. You have your alcohol. Take your liquid culture jar that you've made up, which uh, I'll do a video soon on how we make our liquid culture up. But it, uh, again, it's uh, you choose your your recipe, which I use a, a premix from ShroomSupply.com. And once you take that, I just cook it in a pressure cooker for about 30 minutes um, at 15 psi. So once it's nice and cool, bring it down to the lab. Alcohol that down. Yes, I know. Overkill. Oh, is that okay to speak to the, the people like that? Okay, now we're going to select from our mushroom. And like I said before, I always try to pick something that's a little bigger um, with, a, with a stem because that's a firmer flesh. And the mushroom is going to be easier to split open and get st to the sterile tissue on the inside. So, when I do this, I douse this down with alcohol. Probably not necessary, but I like to be sure. I'm take that, set that down. Rub my hands down. And then, I like to open these pointing towards my laminar float hood. So in my syringe, oh my gosh. So when I open my syringe, I like to open it like that, set it down, take my needle, open it towards the van, keep it toward, pointed towards the fan, and then now it should still be a sterile unit. I'll take this syringe and needle, plunge it into their self-healing injector port. And this is uninoculated liquid culture. And for now, you're just going to take it and suck up some of the liquid culture. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just enough that you've got something backstopping the, the tissue that you're gathering from the washroom. And there. Now, I'm going to take my mushroom and it's easier to start from the cap and tear and tear towards your fan and whichever side you set down just in case you need a backup you can set that down with the sterile side facing your fan 
take your your needle and then you're going to plunge that into the flesh of the mushroom without it exiting the other side and then I take it and I usually do like a little twist okay I don't know if you can see that can you a little bit of tissue, not on the edge there, but just it's inside the needle. So once you've got your tissue in the needle there, you'll take it back to your sanitized stopper, your self healing injector port, just stab that in, and then inject. Now let's see if we can see. Okay, there's the tissue there. That's now in. This right here is part of the self-healing injector port. But we do have the tissue. And all it takes is a tiny little bit of tissue. And this technique is called a needle biopsy. And it is used a lot for breast cancer and uh, anything else that needs a small piece of tissue taken from somewhere. Um, I learned this from again from Peter McCoy's book, Radical Mycology. And uh, I will tell you that, um, well, I guess can we take a little look? Uh, all of these cultures right here are done by tissue clone, straight to LC, and all have been tested clean. And you can see, someone's going to see that tissue. thick growth, all of that came from a teeny, teeny, tiny little piece of tissue from a needle biopsy. And it took 10 days to do it. So I've seen a lot of people suggest that they can alcohol swab down an area and then step through the side of a mushroom. And you probably can do that, but as a lot of people point out, uh, alcohol is just a sanitizing agent, it is not a sterilizing agent, which means that it doesn't get everything as clean as what pure sterilization would do. So I don't like to risk it. I prefer to split my mushroom open just like I would when I'm taking a sample with a scalpel. And uh, you could do this with a scalpel straight to liquid culture, uh, but it can be a little fussy getting your lids on and off and do it still in a clean space. And if you're working somewhere like in your kitchen, or even in the field, you can still do this tissue clone um, right here in the jar with the needle. So I, I suggest splitting your mushroom open if you can, and instead of going through the side wall, so that way you can keep it even cleaner. So once you're finished and you're uh, getting your piece of tissue inside the jar, um, what you want to do is take your jar and place it on your magnetic stirrer or whatever, however you're using to aerate. Uh, whether it be a marble in the jar or whatever. Uh, I prefer the magnetic stirs because they do all the work for you and they make less of a mess. Um, the reason why you're doing this is to allow carbon dioxide to be uh, released from the water and allow oxygen back in. It's much like a bubbler on a fish tank. And this keeps the mycelium from running out of ox available oxygen in the jar. And when you pressure cook these, you actually cook all the available oxygen out of the liquid. So you need to stir these um, as soon as you put tissue in so that they can be oxygenated and you've got exactly what the mycelium needs so it can get that fast growth. And the more often you can stir this, if you can come in and stir it every day or have it just lightly stirring all the time, you will get faster growth. Uh, which is how I've been able to go from a small piece of tissue to a jar full of mycelium in 10 days. So from this point, you can go, once this is grown in with your tissue, um, with all the mycelium, which will look like a lot like a jellyfish, you'll do a couple of things. One of them is you can hold it up to a light source, and if you can see through it, except where your jellyfish looking mycelium is growing, it should be pretty clear. Otherwise, uh, if it's cloudy looking, milky looking, anything like that, it's probably contaminated. Um, beyond that, if it, if it looks clean, you can always test it in a bag of grain, you can test it on an agar dish and, and see if it is clean. And if it's clean, you can take this and expand it to as many jars as you want. So you've taken a mushroom, whether that be a wild mushroom 
or a mushroom from your grow room that uh, you just want to bring into culture, um, into liquid culture, you can, you can do that with this very simple process of just doing a needle biopsy straight into the jar and produce a massive amount of mycelium very, very quickly to use in your operation. So it's a very straightforward process, guys. And uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Uh, we will try to get to any of them that we can as quickly as possible. Please remember to uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, check out the links below for any kind of cool stuff that you can get, codes that you can use on other mushroom websites, and uh, in general, just our social media. we got a lot of cool stuff that comes out on Instagram that you probably don't get to see anywhere else unless you're subscribed to us. So uh, make sure to subscribe to us and hit that like button. And as remember, y'all, keep swan culture. Thank you for watching and please make sure to check out our other videos.